What's going on guys, I'm going to hit you with a review for the uh, WBC Super Bantamweight title fight between Toshiaki Nishioka and Rendell Monroe. <sighs> really good fight before um, I get into it, you know, really entertaining, really good, um, a lot of action going on and uh, one thing about this fight is both fighters I think have got, have, um, got a long future ahead of them to be honest with you. I think that... Um, they were both giving it their all and everything. What I'm going to do in this um, video is I'm just going to break it down round by round. And then I'm going to give you um, the scores and what I think should happen afterwards with both fighters. Uh, round one, Ronald Monroe came out very uh, very calm, looked confident. Um, feeling each other out, to be honest with you. Um, Nishioka looked like he was flowing the... Uh, showing the flashier shots, but a really good defence by Munro, and it's something I've never really seen before. You know, I was a bit worried about his defence and how he might cope with it, and uh, in my prediction, I think Nishioka showed some good range uh, shots, but he kept it really tight, showed the sense of the ring, looked really good. Round two, still good defence. He's um, starting to throw a few more shots, and he looks like he could trouble Nishioka. I gave the round to Munro, personally. I thought he was... Um, looking good, getting forward and causing him trouble. In the third, you know, Nishioka was getting centre of the ring, um, trying to adapt because Munro in the first two rounds was getting the centre of the ring and um, really troubling him. But Nishioka got the uh, centre of the ring and um, started waking up a bit more, you know, more of his round, more of his fight um, and um, started to show the flashes that we all thought. Fourth round though, Munro really lifted his game. He makes things awkward and hit um and hit Nishioka with a hell of a left hand that um made his head just jar back like that. Um, but it didn't really trouble uh N Nishioka too much to be honest with you. I mean it was a good shot, definitely Munro's round that one. And then round five, it was a very good round. Round five, good back and forth action. Um, Nishioka, you know he um Nishioka he um threw a few power shots that looked like it was troubling him, causing real issues for uh, Monroe though in that. And that was where the fight started to turn in my eyes. I thought it was a good equal start. I thought it was going to be an interesting fight and perhaps Renan Monroe could do it. But after the fifth round, the body shot hurt Monroe. He recovered really well. And then after that, it all got a bit one-sided. Not so one-sided that it looked horrible, like a Klitschko would do, just like a Shannon Briggs, not that one sided, but you know, you can start seeing the class and why Nishioka's the best in the Super Bantamweight division. I mean, Nishioka was using the ring well, looking busy. Monroe was still showing good defences, but wasn't really, he couldn't really throw many things back at, at Nishioka, to be honest with you. And um, it was almost like, well, I said Nishioka looked like he wasn't there, you know, a few punches in the air, and Nishioka just. Just um, just started to look the classier fire. I know when round seven came, Munro started throwing jabs. I think he should have perhaps done that a little bit earlier because it was forcing him to go back. But um, Nishoka just started throwing some very good body shots in there and really troubling Munro with the body shots, hurt him, uh, hurt him quite badly in that. And that changed the round really because I thought Munro was looking good at the start, but Nishoka threw the good body shots. And then hurt him. Um, round eight, Monroe started to be outworked, and um, Nishioka started a punch from range, and um, started to look like, you know, what I said from range, throwing the, these long shots, hitting Monroe. Uh, Monroe still showed good defence, but a cut then came up from Monroe under his right eye, and um, st Monroe started bleeding, and then you could start seeing the tide slowly but surely turning. You know, round nine, Nishoka looked tired and um, Munro was trying to get the counters in. Um, and it was working um, to a certain extent, but it then got to the point in the fight where you started to think, I think Munro was a little bit too predictable in that. He was too predictable, you know, too, perhaps with just one whole turn. And it seemed like he couldn't change his game plan too much, which is a problem that I think Munro faced, to be honest with you, throughout the whole thing. I think that was a big issue for him. Um, in the later rounds, 
Uh, Nishoka, as I said, throwing some really good shots on the back foot. He hurt my hurt, hurting my rear with every shot. You know, a whole range of shots, mainly to the body, that was really troubling my row. And uh, a couple of times, my row had a good guard, but you could tell he was worried about the body shots. His el elbows started to come a lot close down to the body, where he's worried about it. Um, Nishoka in the last year, I was looking classy, throwing good body shots, uh, but my row was showing really spirited effort in that. In in the eleventh, especially really spirited. I think he, I think we all knew he was down and not winning rounds. When the twelfth round came out, Monroe knew he needed to do something special. Uh, he was showing some good jabs, um, but Nishioka hurts Monroe well, again on the body and throws a ten fifteen shots just in a row. Well, Monroe's on the ropes and it just um, just looked. It's just Nishioka's speed, his shot selection, his uh, power as well, which just was over overthrown it to be honest with you. I had it that it was 118, 108, where um, you know, all the judges I think uh, had a unanimous decision, had 119 to 111 I believe. That's what I thought it was, but I was talking when the scores came in, so I could be horribly wrong with that. I will check that out for you guys and put it below in the description box, but um, it was a unanimous decision. Really now, even though it looks like a one sided thing, it wasn't that one sided. Munro should be really proud of himself. He worked really hard throughout the whole fight and gave Nishioka problems. The problem is is that as as I said before, I think um Munro may have been a bit too predictable in it and also there was a definite power struggle. Um the shots that Munro was taking or was giving I didn't look that powerful, it looked like they were affecting Nishioka. Nishioka's definitely the best in the division by a long way, I think. And um I think it just showed that he, his class in the weight category, you know. I mean, um nothing that special. I think Nishioka wasn't quite expecting Monroe to come up with such a spirited effort as he did, but I think Monroe just didn't quite have the power behind the shots. I mean I mean he he's one twenty one and only knocked out nine. So the, as you say, there's definitely a power issue there with that. Um, but, you know, it was a spirited performance. Mumro has got nothing to be ashamed of. It's not like he walked out there and got battered. That was not the case at all. Just It was just an incredible display when Nishioka showed a lot more skills than I gave him credit for, especially on the back foot. Where to next for Nishioka? I think Nishioka would just dominate the division. There's only one fighter I can really see, you know, Giving him any problems, and I've got to be honest with you, that is the um, that's Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. You know, I think Vasquez Jr. is probably the fighter that's going to cause problems. I'm really excited by Vasquez Jr., and I think he might be the one, if any, in that division to cause problems. Where to for um, Rendell Munro? I think Rendell Munro is a classy performer, I think he showed he's world class today, I think he shows that he deserves to be up there. Um, probably fighting the wrong champion though in my eyes i'd like to see him if he was to go for a title shot to fight against steve molitor i think he will beat molitor in my eyes i think um on molitor's last performance anyway um you know i think that um molitor's last performance when he fought jason booth over in england you know i think munro would i think munro would beat molitor and i like to see that happening but as you should think Munro show world class ability and he's not out of his depth at all, which I know some people are worried about. Um, please subscribe for all box reviews, previews and news uh, I'll be reviewing. Um, so put in your comments below, tell me what you thought about the fight. And um, that is it really, Boxing Clown 90 is out.